You're watching NBC4 working for you. Live from the area's leading news station, this is News 4 at 6. A thunderstorm roared through parts of our area this afternoon. Big winds, some lightning, lots of rain. But it could be that we ain't seen nothing yet. Good evening. I'm Jim Vance. Doreen is off tonight. Veronica Johnson is up in the Weather Center with word that if you're planning a picnic this weekend or an outdoor party, forget about it. Veronica? Certainly Friday or Saturday, you might as well forget about it unless you just like being out in the rain and the water and the high water at that. Uh, meanwhile, we've had uh, some water of our own today, some heavy rains coming through. There still is a severe thunderstorm warning out for Prince George's County until 6.15. We watch this one because these storms kind of slow to exit the area heading out over the bay. And there's a few more storms, though not as strong as the ones earlier, that have uh, developed just to the south and west now over the southern district and moving into Prince George's County around Upper Marlboro. And while we have all that going on, of course, Bonnie, due to make a landfall sometime early tomorrow morning around the panhandle of Florida, as it does so by late Thursday and by Friday morning, the remnants of Bonnie will be over our area. And Charlie's remnants, yes, there's another storm. You know it, and this one is a hurricane. Its remnants will be moving up late Thursday. The two of them together, we're talking rainfall totals, folks, in excess of four inches over this three, four day period. So rainfall through Saturday, pretty high. That means possible flooding. Wendy? Oh, get out your hip boots. Thanks, Veronica. Fairfax County police have busted several members of area motorcycle gangs. These arrests were part of a two year undercover investigation. Julie Carey is live in Fairfax this evening with this story. Julie? Well, at 6 o'clock this morning, Fairfax County Police and officers in six other jurisdictions fanned out and began serving arrest and search warrants on members of several motorcycle clubs. Investigators here refer to them as outlaw motorcycle gangs. Now, the search warrants and arrest warrants are still under seal, so we don't know the names yet of those arrested, but we do know that at least 11 search warrants were served and at least seven people are under arrest. Those arrests took place in communities from Calvert County, Maryland, in Fairfax, Loudoun, and Spotsylvania counties, and then far farther south in uh, Colonial Heights and in Petersburg, Virginia. Police are now hoping that today's arrest will put an end to an effort to reestablish this type of gang in Northern Virginia. It was early 2002 when a Fairfax County detective was asked to go undercover and infiltrate the Red Devils Motorcycle Club in Northern Virginia. Fairfax County Police commanders say trouble from motorcycle gangs hadn't been seen here in years. Primarily we hear about the youth gangs. Um, you know, in, in the area and what a problem they are. Well, I'm here to tell you that uh, other types of gang activities are also here. The Red Devils led the detective to contact with the more established club sponsoring them, the Hells Angels Club in North Beach, Maryland, in Calvert County. Soon after, the undercover officer also joined the Fates Assembly Motorcycle Club, also in Northern Virginia. That group is backed by the East Coast parent organization, the Hells Angels of New York City. Police say the clubs were focused on crime, not riding motorcycles. And during that time, he identified uh, a great number of criminal violations, criminal enterprise operations, narcotics, uh, trafficking, firearms violations, and so forth. The investigation is expected to bring more arrests and police hope an end to this type of gang activity in Northern Virginia. Uh, it is something that we detected uh, that the Hells Angels was trying to establish a club and organizations within Virginia. It hadn't been done in recent years. Uh, we saw that coming through this investigation. We put a stop to it and disrupted it, and we, can, we plan on continuing to disrupt operations. Again, when the arrest and search warrants are unsealed sometime in the next 12 to 24 hours, much more will be revealed about this investigation of the kind of criminal activity that was allegedly underway. We do know that the charges filed today range from firearms and narcotics charges, promotion of gang activity, and several probation violations. Reporting live from Fairfax County, I'm Julie Carey. Back to you. Thank you, Julie. A guilty plea today in the shooting death of an eight-year-old girl who was killed while she was watching television in a relative's house. Eight-year-old Chelsea Cromartie was killed in May when a bullet crashed through a window at her aunt's home, striking her in the head. Ricardo and Rashid Hall both pleaded guilty this morning to second-degree murder, and they each now face five to 40 years in prison. They'll be sentenced in November. Chelsea's family was not happy with today's plea, saying the men deserved a much harsher sentence.
There is some new information tonight about the suspect in the Maisha Lowe murder investigation. Joshua Ross may be linked to another murder. Ross was arrested and charged with the shooting death of Lowe last month. The 15-year-old girl was killed as she sat in a car on F Street in Northeast D.C. Chris Gordon joins us now from the D.C. Superior Courthouse with more on this story. Chris? Jim, at a court hearing today, 20-year-old Joshua Ross was ordered to be held without bond and face trial for murder. The mother of 15-year-old Maisha Lowe came to court to look at the man charged with killing her daughter. 20-year-old Joshua Ross is being held without bond for murder. Maisha Lowe was the unintended victim of the shooting. She just got an opportunity to see the alleged person who totally destroyed her life. And she just, she just wants some peace for right now. 15-year-old Maisha Lowe was sitting in the back of a parked car with two other women on July 24th, just before midnight. A car pulled up and someone started shooting. It appears the target of the attack was a boyfriend of one of the other girls. We've also found out today that this young man may have been involved in another killing on July 14th. Uh, uh, and another killing that was murdered. The shooting happened here at the corner of Montello Avenue and Holbrook Terrace in Northeast Washington. It was July 14th. Gregory Gibbons was killed with a 9 millimeter handgun during an apparent robbery. Rachel Ford works for the Corrections Department and says she's called police to report drug activity and violence in her neighborhood. Because sometimes I can be in the house and I can hear a gun go boom, 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 boom. OK, and then I'm always going to hit the floor because a bullet knows nobody. It can come right in my house. D.C. Detective Tony Patterson says ballistics evidence links the gun used on July 14th in the Trinidad neighborhood with a gun that was used July 24th to kill Maisha Lowe. Joshua Ross has been charged with first degree murder while armed. If convicted, he faces the possibility of life in prison. We're live at the D.C. Superior Court. Back to you in the studio. Chris Gordon. Thanks, Chris. Yet another person has gotten sick at the University of Maryland, and officials think the norovirus is to, cause, is to blame. That's the same flu-like illness that sometimes spreads on cruise ships. But health experts still don't know where the virus came from. This latest person with symptoms got sick at the Clarice Smith Performing Arts Center last night and was taken. That person was taking part in a music camp and had stayed in La Plata Hall. 100 high school students from Chicago got sick after staying in the same dorm over the weekend. Now school officials are disinfecting every building that was visited by those students. Finally, the district has selected a new school superintendent. Clifford Janey was formally introduced this afternoon. James Adams is at the school board headquarters now with more on this story. James? Well, Jim, observers who met him for the first time used words like refreshing, energetic, and they say he just brings a new spirit and attitude to the D.C. school system. Some members of the collaborative say they were most impressed because he brought a matrix of data with him when he came to apply. He showed how students improved while he was superintendent of the Rochester schools. He brings solid credentials, but he's got a rough road ahead. Janey says the stars were aligned. His skills and abilities match the needs and desires of one of the nation's most troubled school systems. Creating a bridge and a link between developing and accelerating student achievement and taking care of the business side of the house. Janey last headed the Rochester, New York school system, leaving in a swirl of controversy over budget deficits but he brings 29 years in education. Well, I think that Dr. Janey, in having been a superintendent and having worked in the corporate world and having twice been uh, the chair of the Council of Great City Schools and having participated in their assessments of school systems that are up for reform, he has shown tremendous intellectual depth, leadership, willingness to reform, willingness to move quickly. The school board now moves into contract negotiations with Janey. Sources tell News 4 a salary in the range of $300,000 a year is a likely possibility. Mayor Williams this afternoon made a personal pledge. And Mr. Superintendent, I pledged uh, my full support unequivocal and emphatic for you and for the entire executive branch of this government. And I know that all of us do. And I know that uh, 
you will respond as our city expects, and that is if you're running into difficulties, if you're running into trouble, you'll let all of us know, and I think our citizens will come running. But welcome to our city. Thank you very we much. look forward to working with you, Doctor. So the mayor says, hands off unless I'm called upon. The tough job begins now, the actual contract negotiations. No word on when Clifford Janey will actually come on board here at D.C. School headquarters. Jim, back to you in the studio. James Adams. Thanks, James. The Dunbar armored car courier shot and killed last week during a robbery was laid to rest today. And the chairman of the Dunbar company that he worked for spoke at the funeral, expressing regret to Jason Schwindler's family for his death. Co-workers talked about the challenge of continuing a dangerous job as police search for the killers. Darcy Spencer reports. <laughs> Christine Schwindler is comforted in the darkest moment of her life, the funeral for her 28-year-old husband, Jason Schwindler. He was shot and killed in a robbery last Friday. Their little boy, Nathan, smiles. He's too young to understand that daddy's not coming home. Just very sad to have to be here today. It's just such a, a terrible loss, and um, it's senseless for this to happen. Um, have a little boy that's one-year-old, now his dad is gone. It's just horrible. Schwindler was a Dunbar armored car money courier. Hooded robbers shot him during an early afternoon ambush outside a BB&T bank in Hyattsville. Numerous Dunbar workers attended the funeral. They continue their dangerous duties in the dawning reality that the killers remain at large. It's a little bit scary, to be honest with you. It's, we know they're there and we know there's nothing we can do about it. We just carry on the best way we can. You know, we, we become more vigilant what's happening around us. And we'll just carry on that way as best we can. That's what Jay would want us to do. That's what he would do. Schwindler was a Navy veteran. His flag-draped coffin carried into the Our Lady of the Fields Catholic Church. A Dunbar worker was among the pallbearers. I always say a prayer every morning, take me home safe. I've had this medal. It's old, it's rusted. And I always say a prayer every morning that just bring me home safe. Let me just do my job and go home safe. Schwindler was remembered as a once lonely sailor stationed in the coldness of Iceland who found warmth in the love of a woman he met over the internet. She would later become his wife. And now she must go on and raise their son without him. Darcy Spencer, News 4. Still to come in our broadcast tonight, the case against Kobe Bryant has been put on hold. Plus, find out why a veteran newsman is thrown in jail. People in Florida bracing themselves for two powerful storms. We'll have a live report coming up. And George, what's happening at the park? Good evening, Wendy. Well, the Redskins signed an old, old veteran to help out. Uh, did the Cleveland Browns cave in to Kellen Winslow and Sonny? We'll talk to the quarterback who's trying to change the quarterback position. Rotation. News 4 at 6, that's a big word, isn't it? It continues. It's Toyota time, the nationwide clearance event, the year's biggest event. You've got to act now. Get big clearance savings on 2004 Camry sedans with a 1,000 cash back or 2.9% APR financing. Or lease a 2005 Camry LE for just $2.29 a month for 48 months with $19.95 due at signing. Your new Camry is loaded with standard features. Toyota Time. Selection. Value. Clearance. Now. On May 4, 1999, WRC-TV was granted a license by the Federal Communications Commission to serve the public interest as a public trustee until October 1, 2004. Our license will expire on October 1, 2004. We have filed an application for renewal with the FCC. A copy of this application is available for public inspection during our regular business hours. It contains information concerning the station's performance during the last eight years to the extent that the station's performance has not already been approved by the FCC. Individuals who wish to advise the FCC of facts relating to our renewal application and to whether this station has operated in the public interest should file comments and petitions with the FCC by September 1, 2004. Further information concerning the FCC's broadcast license renewal process is available at NBC4 at 4001 Nebraska Avenue Northwest, Washington, D.C. 20016 or may be obtained from the FCC at 445 12th Street Southwest, Washington, D.C. 20554. 
we're going to need you to come down off the vehicle. No, no, no. You just want my clearance cash. No, sir. Uh, keep the clearance cash. We'd just like you to come down off the vehicle. No, I'm not coming down. I can't come down. Come on. Be a pal. Uh, oh. During Ford's model year clearance, claim your Ford F-150 with 5,000 clearance cash or 0% financing. What do you need us to call? We'll call your wife, you know, get you down off the... Uh, no, my vehicle. wife's on the van over there. You're watching News 4 at 6. Mark Wallace is a veteran journalist with the CBS News show 60 Minutes. Last night, he was arrested after clashing with city inspectors outside a restaurant in New York City. Wallace says when he walked out of the restaurant, he saw that the inspectors were talking to his limo driver. Apparently, the driver was double parked. The inspectors asked Wallace to step away, but they say he lunged at them. Then, according to some witnesses, the officers forced Wallace, who's 86 years old, by the way, on top of their car. They cuffed him and arrested him, took him off to jail on charges of disorderly conduct. The inspectors say Wallace was disrespectful. But a lot of people, including New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, say the inspectors overreacted. Wallace is due in court on the disorderly conduct charge in October. There is yet another new twist in the Kobe Bryant sexual assault case. Prosecutors have asked the judge to delay the trial indefinitely. They say the accuser has been affected by developments in this case, and they say their case has been hurt by the release of testimony about her sexual activities. This motion was filed yesterday, the same day the alleged victim filed a civil lawsuit seeking monetary damages <clears throat> from Bryant. More damaging testimony from Scott Peterson's former mistress today. Amber Fry testified about telephone calls she taped between her and Scott. Prosecutors say Peterson murdered his wife because he wanted to start a new life with Fry. Joe Rico has the latest now from Redwood City, California. Court began Wednesday with Amber Fry still on the stand. Prosecutors introduced more taped phone conversations between Fry and Scott Peterson. This time, the conversation dealt with her issues of trust and New Year's resolutions. There wasn't a lot of meat on any of this. And we have nine more hours of tapes. Yesterday in court, prosecutors played a phone conversation where Scott Peterson claimed he was in Paris looking at fireworks when in fact he was attending a candlelight vigil for his then missing wife, Lacey Peterson. Everybody else is spending 16, 17, 18, 20 hours a day desperately looking for Lacey. And he's engaged in this phone conversation. It's, shot. it's un unbelievable what it tells you about his character. The defense is expected to attack Fry's credibility, painting her as a woman scorned. And they're going to characterize her in, de in the defense cross-examination as a scorned lover and a snitch. By the way, I don't think it will work. Prosecutors hope Fry's testimony and the taped phone conversations help bolster their theory that Peterson was a chronic liar who was capable of murder. Scott Peterson's defense has acknowledged all along that he did cheat on his wife and that he is an adulterer. But they argue painting him as a murderer is just too big a leap. From Redwood City, California, Joe Rico, News 4. It's unusual, but there's a lot of activity up on Capitol Hill. Congressmen there, they're trying to figure out the best way to reform the intelligence community. We'll take a look inside that debate coming up. Coming up next, we're going to have a live report from Florida where they are bracing for not one, but two big storms. Veronica Johnson's going to join us in a couple of minutes to tell us how it's going to affect us. Can't wait for the Olympic Games in Athens to begin? Log on to NBC4.com now and click on the Ozone for everything you want to know about the games. Athlete bios to video highlights, local TV schedules, and more, including News 4 reports on our local Olympians who are going for the gold. Just click on the Ozone. Your all-access pass to the Olympic Games begins now, only at NBC4.com. Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., children and adults are thanking our orthodontists for their beautiful new smiles. We make getting braces easy with no down payment and low monthly payments. Call 1-800-4-BRACES. Ross presents a Shoe Week extravaganza. Women's shoes, men's shoes, kids' shoes, and an extraordinary selection of athletic shoes. Save 50 to 70% on the top brands and the latest styles. 
So hurry to Shoe Week at Ross. The savings will be music to your ears. Sometimes stuff just doesn't work right. That's why you should drive a Toyota certified used vehicle. Toyotas have that dependable quality, so you shouldn't have to worry about high repair costs. Don't you wish Toyota made more stuff? See your Toyota dealer now for great low financing on Toyota certified used vehicles. The best new cars make the best used cars. Is your transmission fluid old and dirty? Get Amco's Power Purge. Only $99.95 at Amco. You're watching News 4 at 6. <clears throat> Tonight, residents across Florida are bracing for what could be a double whammy. Over the course of two days, two tropical storm systems are expected to come ashore. They are Tropical Storm Bonnie and Hurricane Charlie. Jay Gray joins us live from Tampa, where tonight with more. Jay? Well, good evening, Wendy, and this is that time we always hear about the calm before the storm. We have patchwork clouds here in Tampa, a lot of sunshine, calm waters, really providing few clues that the entire Florida Gulf Coast is bracing for some heavy rains, high winds, and back-to-back -back storms. Rain is the real concern in the Florida panhandle. Panama City was already soaked by intense thunderstorms, and now Bonnie is on the way. Uh, our main concern with this system is going to be the uh, amount of rainfall that, that may come with it. Uh, and this is only the first wave of a two-fisted tropical punch expected to pound the Florida coast. Now a hurricane, Charlie is gathering strength and cutting a path toward the lower Florida Gulf Coast. Sanibel, they're taking truckloads out there. I just like to be prepared. So and my husband never believes anything's ever going to happen, so he would never buy these things. Can we go? Yes. Can we go? Yes. Emergency management teams are working around the clock, and so are local crews, pulling boats to higher ground and securing whatever they can. Uh, we take as many of them as we can, and then we have to stop. Locals and tourists are split, some packing to outrun the storms, while others are planning to ride out the hurricane. And already there is a partial evacuation notice in effect for areas of the Florida Keys. Now, Bonnie, which we are hearing is gathering strength and could actually be a Category 1 hurricane before it makes land, is expected to make landfall early Thursday morning near Panama City. Charlie, not far behind, but is further to the south, expected to first affect the Keys about 24 hours later. That's early Friday morning. In Tampa, I'm Jay Gray. Now, Wendy, back to you. Thanks, Gray. Jay, Gray. Uh, it's going to be a rough couple. I know it's going to be a rough couple of days down there. But of course, we want to know what it means for us. Well, for us, we're so self-absorbed. Right. It's still a strong storm. It's going to channel all that energy and all that moisture right up the east coast. So for a couple of days here, not just from Bonnie, but also from Charlie's moisture, we will get some heavy rain. I said earlier, we're going to be floating. And, well, the the ground is going to be very very soggy. So do what you can in preparation for that. Meanwhile, earlier today had the hail. We even had the lightning. This Fairfax County near Vienna. Lightning struck house in the 9,000 block of Glendevy Court in Oakton, Virginia. Two alarm fire, probably caused by a lightning strike. And we also had heavy rain that came through the area. And as I said, some hail, even some penny sized hail throughout the area. The heavy rain, yes, we do have video of that as well. There's hail with it, gully washer type rain. It came down hard. Those are the leaves. And, and a green leaf had that, so probably uh, uh, just pulled off the uh, tree from the uh, intense uh, downpours here, folks. Uh, just scrambling to get by. This just about an hour and a half ago. But hail was reported in the, in the district, Falls Church, Annandale, and even Chantilly. Meanwhile, that storm has pulled off to the east. Had a rainbow earlier. There you can see it on the far left-hand portion of your screen as we pan out a little bit more. Now, we're not going to have clear skies tonight, but we are likely to see some parting of the sky, so I do think that we'll see some partly cloudy conditions. Started the day at 70, and as a matter of fact, we uh, dipped down to 70 degrees when the storms blew through as well. 86, that was the high today, closer to the average. The June rainfall now, over four, or I should say since the beginning of June, our rainfall is four inches above normal. 
Here's what's left on today's rain. It's over Prince George's County, just east of us, up in Marlboro and areas around uh, Anne Arundel County, heading out of the area. Just a little bit of lightning left now, just down around uh, I-301. Meanwhile, another little area that's been moving up from the south, this one hitting the northern neck, areas around Montrose and on down to the south and west. But as I open it up, we're clear behind all of that, so once this moves out of here, that should be about it. That severe thunderstorm watch that was out until 8, likely to be uh, dropped, I think, very shortly now. In terms of rainfall amounts and in terms of winds with this system, our winds went as high as 65 miles per hour. This one clocked at Nova Annandale Campus in Annandale, Virginia. Winds again pulling out of the south now and much lighter. 42 mile per hour wind gusts reported there in Anne Arundel County with rainfall upwards uh, an inch and a quarter there. And you can see how heavy it was raining nearly at a rate of eight inches per hour. That's the kind of rain we're going to have coming up over the next couple of days. The rain that comes down hard, the rain that comes down fast, and the rain that comes with some high winds because it's coming down so fast. Here's our weather front, the one that caused today's storms. It's moving to the east. Skies, though, with uh, still a lot of moisture in the air. Again, never going mostly clear. Our attention, though, is down to the south with Tropical Storm Bonnie that's moving northeast now at 12 miles per hour. That puts it right up over the uh, panhandle of Florida sometime early tomorrow morning. And then it continues tracking on further to the north. Late Thursday, it's over areas around Georgia. So Atlanta, Macon getting some heavy rain. Same thing, too, around uh, areas of South Carolina eventually as it moves up. And now, Charlie, it's a hurricane because the winds are up uh, over 74 miles per hour. This one taking a track just south of Jamaica, producing some high winds and some rain. And by Sunday, it makes its moisture, makes its move right up into the mid-Atlantic. Let's go ahead and quickly get through the future cast. I wanted to show you those rainfall totals again from the district east to Ocean City, Rehoboth, and from areas around uh, Lynchburg on east to Newport News, over four inches of rain. This is a lot of rain. Again, do that preparation early. Clean out your gutters. Do what you can around the base of your house. Tonight should be quiet then. Muggy and humid. 70 the temperature. 82 tomorrow. I think it'll be quiet in the morning with most of the rain moving in during the afternoon and evening, and especially tomorrow night into uh, Friday morning will have some heavy rain and then another wet wave of heavy rain Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. Right now, I do think that we could salvage some of Sunday for the weekend. Let's hope so. Thanks, Thanks Veronica. Winter seems far away on a day like this, doesn't it? But the Energy Department is already warning that home heating costs are going to cost you a lot more this year. The government says most U.S. households will see their heating bills jump 10 to 20 percent. The biggest increases will be for people who use natural gas, but the cost of heating oil, electric heat, and propane also have gone up. Experts say the increases are due to tight supplies and uncertainty in the Middle East. Still ahead on News 4 at 6, a wild scene on the streets of D.C. as suspects in a stolen bus are chased by police. Family and friends have come together to say goodbye to a fallen armored car guard. And what should the role of a national intelligence czar actually be? We'll take you inside the debate that's going on on Capitol Hill next. Tonight, Tom Brokaw from the Olympic Village in Athens talks one-on-one -on -one with 19-year-old American swimming sensation Michael Phelps. NBC Nightly News tonight. I'm easy to please. In fact, I only want two things, the latest and the greatest. So I go with the digital leader, Cox. With Cox, I not only get the best high-def programming, but I get the fastest high-speed internet, too. Not bad, huh? All from one company on one simple bill. Okay, so maybe that's more than two things. <laughs> get these great video services from Cox with high-speed internet for $49.99 a month for three months and get a free cable modem. So here's the deal. Cox leads the way when it comes to delivering the latest and greatest digital services. Digital cable and high-speed internet. Cox has them all. Oh, and here's the great part. The more you get, the more you save. And I don't know about you, but I like saving. A lot. <laughs> one company, one bill, one phone call and you'll be saving too. Get these great video services from Cox with high-speed internet for $49.99 a month for three months and get a free cable modem. The movement starting in D.C. Going to New York, Chicago, Boston to 35 cities by September. Low fares on every flight, every day. 
Low fares with cool planes, leather seats, and more freedom. It's everything the old airlines aren't. Independence Air. In relative terms, it's like the birth of rock and roll. This is Chuck Berry. Save now at flyeye.com to 35 cities this summer. Offenbachers, the best place for top quality patio furniture is having its giant overstock reduction sale. Choose from the area's largest selection at the lowest prices. From exclusive patio sets to grills, everything is up to 65% off list prices. And as always, Offenbachers will match or beat any competitor's price. Visit one of our six convenient locations and see our huge selection of bar stools and pool tables. Offenbachers, a store full of savings for a season full of fun. You're watching NBC4. 750 on double cabs. Toyota time. Selection. Value. Clearance. Now.